This is the life group lesson for Sunday, April the 14th, 2024. We are still in the book of Genesis. Today we are in Genesis chapter 32 and the lesson is entitled Wrestled. I have my journal here with me today and I wanna share with you five things that we can take away from today's passage. Before we begin, let me open us up with a word of prayer. Father, as we study the passage in Genesis today, may we thank you for changing us when we encounter you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jacob prepares for difficulties. Let's look at Genesis chapter 32, starting in verse 22 and 23. During the night, Jacob got up and began moving his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven sons across the Jabbok River at the crossing. After he sent his family across the river, he sent across everything that he had. As Jacob is starting to return to his homeland, he divides everyone up and everything with him into two groups hoping that at least one of these groups would escape if Esau came and attacked. Jacob prayed for God to rescue him from Esau. He also came up with the idea of preparing gifts for his servants to take to Esau. One wave of gifts after another with some distance between each wave. Jacob hoped the gifts would soften Esau's heart. But during the night, Jacob gets up, he takes his family and the remainder of his possessions to the ford of the Jabbok River. Instead of entering into his homeland of Canaan, Jacob had taken the most direct route south towards Seir to meet his brother. He is afraid of Esau, but he's not going to hide from him. When Jacob and those with him reached the ford of the Jabbok, he sent them all across along with all of his possessions, but Jacob stays behind. The text doesn't give us a reason for Jacob's decision to take his family across the river at night or for his decision to stay on the other side. The river would have been easier to cross during the day unless Jacob thought that Esau might attack them while they were crossing it. This would make it nearly impossible to escape. But whatever he was thinking, Jacob is about to have a life-changing encounter with God. The second thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jacob wrestles with God. Let's look at verse 24. Jacob was left alone, and a man came and wrestled with him. The man fought with him until the sun came up. After sending his family across the stream, Jacob is left alone, and God would use what happens here to not only bring about a resolution in Jacob's situation with Esau, but it would bring about a resolution to Jacob's life. Up until this point, his life had been characterized as a struggle with both people and with God. In the night, Jacob is grabbed by what appears to be a man, and Jacob wrestles with this man until the break of dawn. This is not a dream this time. Jacob actually wrestled with someone. In Hebrew, there's a play on the words Jacob, Jabbok, and wrestle. All three words have similar sounds. And in order for Jacob to cross the Jabbok, he must enter into the promised land and wrestle with this man. Now, the ambiguity of the word man heightens the mystery of this account. All Jacob knew was that a man had grabbed hold of him in the darkness of the night. Later on, the prophet Hosea says Jacob wrestled with God. And like he did with Abraham when he revealed the timing of Isaac's birth, God appears to Jacob as a man. When this encounter was over, Jacob realized that the man was God. It was God who initiated this encounter and not Jacob. The third thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jacob recognizes the Lord. Let's look at verses 25 and 26. When the man saw that he could not defeat Jacob, he touched Jacob's leg and put it out of joint. Then the man said to Jacob, Let me go, the sun is coming up. But Jacob said, I will not let you go, you must bless me. Jacob is characterized as one who had exceptional physical strength throughout his life. It's not surprising then that he was not only able to hold his own against this mysterious assailant until his opponent struck Jacob's hip socket with a blow strong enough to knock it out of location. This gave Jacob's opponent an advantage in the wrestling match. And the one who had spent a lifetime of getting an advantage over others is now the one at a disadvantage. Jacob then begins to realize the true nature of the man he had been struggling with. Therefore, he declares to his opponent that he would not let him go unless he blessed him. Now, Jacob had cheated his brother and secured for himself the blessing from his father by deception. Now, he's asking for God's blessing only by clinging to him. Afraid and desperate, Jacob now asks for that that he cannot provide for himself. Later, the prophet Hosea gives us greater insight into this encounter. He indicates that Jacob wept 
and sought his favor. At his last encounter with Laban, Jacob had referred to God as the fear of Isaac, meaning that Isaac worshiped and trusted in the Lord alone. Jacob needed to only recognize that he did not need to fear Esau or anyone else for that matter. Just like his father before him, the only one Jacob needs to fear is God. The fourth thing we want to get from today's passage is that Jacob gets a new name. Let's look at verses 27 to 29. Then the man said to him, what is your name? And Jacob said, my name is Jacob. Then the man said to him, your name will not be Jacob. Your name will now be Israel. I give you this name because you have fought with God and with men and you have won. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But the man said, why do you ask my name? Then the man blessed Jacob at that place. The man speaking to Jacob brings everything into focus when he says, what is your name? Jacob's name literally means one who supplants or grabs. This word becomes associated with someone who seizes or circumvents or usurps or assails or overreaches to accentuate the kind of man that Jacob had been in the past. Jacob's name was truly linked to his character and his actions. And the question is like many other questions God poses in the Old Testament, to force the one being asked to face the truth about themselves. Jacob's reply forced him to confess who and what he was, a deceiver, a supplanter, and a cheater. The man then tells Jacob that he's no longer to be Jacob, but instead will now be Israel, which means God fights or God strives. This is the third person God renames, Abram to Abraham and Sarah to Sarah. Their new names reflect the expansiveness of God's blessing on them through his covenant with them. So this is also the case with Jacob's name change to Israel. Jacob then asked the man to reveal his name, and the man's response is measured, asking Jacob his reason for the question. It's really, though, as if he's saying to Jacob, if you would stop and think about it, you should already know who I am. Also, the fact that he blessed him there should have been a strong indicator that the man was God or an angel possessing the authority of God. The final thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jacob is permanently reminded of this encounter. Let's conclude with verses 30 to 32. So Jacob named that place Peniel. He said, At this place I saw God face to face, but my life was spared. Then the sun came up as Jacob left Peniel. He was limping because of his leg. So even today the people of Israel do not eat the muscle that is on the hip joint, because this is the muscle where Jacob was hurt. Jacob realizes that he has encountered God face to face, so he named the place Peniel, which means the face of God. It's by God's grace that he visited Jacob, wrestled with Jacob, and changed Jacob's name. Jacob also recognizes that he's still alive because of God's grace. The grace of God is the work of God. Jacob's action here reveals his faith. If God spared him, what could Esau do to him? Jacob had asked God to rescue him from Esau. Now he knew that God is going to answer his prayer. Paul tells us in Romans, if God is for us, then everyone else might as well be. Jacob left Peniel with two things he didn't have before he arrived, a new name and a new limp. Both would serve as a reminder of his grace-filled encounter with God. His name would be a reminder of his relationship with God, and the limp would be a reminder of the failure of his self-sufficiency and the need to have continued humble faith in God. Therefore, the nation of Israel made it a custom to refrain from eating the thigh muscle that's at the hip socket in honor of the events that happened to Jacob at Peniel. As we conclude today's study, there's three things we can take away from it. The first is that we can expect to encounter God in times of need. Also, believers have a new identity after we encounter God. We are new creations. And finally, we can celebrate the work of God when we encounter him. Thank you for joining me for today's session in the book of Genesis. I will see you in our next session.